today we're looking at something to make you something truly terrifying. Hi. <gasps> See, this pinnacle of the dessert industry has a special move up its sleeve so that it can truly become the most powerful dessert. So, all you have to do is slap a CPU and some other random junk from Best Buy's garbage van, and then boom, freaking raspberry pie. A raspberry pie is simply this green microcomputer. It's got a bunch of stuff, CPU, RAM, got ribbon, kit, ribbon cord slot, HDMI power, oxen out, uh, it's got ethernet, meaning, you know, better than just Wi-Fi. A USB SD card slot. Now, the big kicker with this is simply this ribbon cord slot, but more importantly, all these little things down here. I'm trying to get this in. So basically, these can all be soldered into, meaning you can do a lot of stuff like electronics, but you could also connect multiple ports into the ribbon cord or, you know, a ribbon cable. So, it can do quite a lot of stuff with, you know, electronics, but it can do a little more than that. In fact, it can also, it's also really good for emulation. Raspberry Pi has this program you can install called RetroPie. This lets you emulate games on this little microcomputer, so I have a Raspberry Pi 3 Model B+, meaning that mine can sort of handle N64 games, but it can run PS1 games quite well, actually. And any console before that, or if it's a handheld about PSP or GBA or older, then it can run it. Meaning that you could have a full console of classic games. And the craziest thing is this whole thing fits in the palm of my hand. It's cool. RetroPie has a lot of settings that you can tweak, and it's quite fun to mess around with. But, I mean, being able to play Minish Cap on a TV, it's just cool. If you really want to shine with the Raspberry Pi, then installing Raspbian is a must. It's also called like Raspberry OS or things now. I don't know, they changed the name for some reason. I don't know. Raspbian is a version of Linux that is used specifically for Raspberry Pi, which allows for simple interfaces with lots of control. If you would like to learn Python, Java, or JavaScript, or TypeScript, then using a Raspberry Pi could be an interesting way to do so. But you could also learn a lot more about the language than just using like a game engine or a framework on a computer, simply because the electronics capabilities. Being able to hook up the Raspberry Pi to, for instance, LEDs or motors or things like that means that you can do a lot of cool stuff with it. And it also is just neat. It's it's fun to experiment with these languages on Raspberry Pi. Even if you already know these languages, it's still a good idea to just try it out on here simply because it's fun. But like, it just can do all these cool things with it. And so really, installing Raspberry N is great. Also on Raspberry N, you can install software. For instance, I got Doom running on Raspberry N somehow. Um, but you can also, there's a web browser you can stick in there. You can and you can use Raspberry N as just like a general desktop. Just you have to keep in mind the lower power capabilities of the Raspberry Pi. But even still, it's just fun. I mean, why else would you get a Raspberry Pi? Because you think it's boring? So yeah, that's a Raspberry Pi. Uh, that's just kind of what I've been thinking about it. I've been working on stuff with it. And just, I got Libre Sprite working on here. Wow. And yeah, you can do a lot of cool stuff with it. You know, this little thing do quite a lot. And it's been a lot of fun messing with it, making this video. I'm probably going to do more videos using it. Maybe not just an overview like this. I might do more projects on it and document that. Well, let's see. Uh, but for now, uh, play my game. Uh, currently, as of recording this, 
the olive jam is still going on. By the time this comes out, I believe it will be done. But go and play other people's games there. I'll have a link in the description to that. Make sure, you know, play my games. Like this video. Subscribe to the channel. Join the Discord. I, I don't say that enough. There's like no one on there, but every time I get somewhere on there, it's so fun. I need more, more people need to be on there because you can help enrich the community. You know, we just talk about game dev stuff or art or just whatever. And so, yeah, I also sometimes do events on there. Uh, in fact, I'm going to announce a new one now. And starting today, I want you to a challenge, you know. Uh, make your own rock, paper, scissors game. During the segment, uh, you might have seen some coding footage in the background. I was making a rock, paper, scissors game that actually works in Python. Now, it doesn't have to be in Python necessarily, but just make a rock, paper, scissors game. There will be a, a Discord, uh, like, chant, like, section, you know, on the Discord channel. So, like, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Go on Discord, you'll find it there. Join the server, woo! Yeah, so, so like, subscribe, uh, goodbye, uh, peace.